Hello, my name is Rob Edwards. Welcome to the Inklings Press YouTube channel. Uh, and today we are having a bit of an event to talk about the launch of our new anthology, Tales from Alternate Earths, Volume 3. And joining me today for this conversation, uh, we, oh, oh, there we go. Um, already, already pulling, out, <laughs> pulling, the, pulling the big moves. Um, well, we'll start with, since he's, since he's showing off the book, I'll start, I'll start by introducing um, Leo McBride. Uh, A.K.A. Stephen Hunt. He is uh, our editor. Uh, he has. I've just instantly, as soon as I started talking, forgotten the name of your story uh, in the anthology. Uh, Heaven above, hell below. That's the one. Heaven above, hell below. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, but you are you are one of the founding members of Inklings Press. Um, so say hello to hello Stephen. Introduce yourself. Anything else you want to add from that introduction? Nice to meet you all. Um, Stephen in real life, Leo McBride is my pen name, um, but um, it's really a pleasure to be here and with such talented writers, such a lovely bunch of people to be with. Also founding member of Inklings Press, uh, we have Brent A. Harris. Brent, tell us about yourself for those people who don't, who've not met you before. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. I'm extremely excited for Alternate Earth 3. It's really like a personal pet project and a, a dream, to, uh, dream of mine to have such amazing authors and to put it out there. And uh, life brought me out to Naples, Italy, but since it's nighttime here, you don't get to see Vesuvius in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you very much. It's very much night here in Finland as well. So yeah, all I've got is darkness outside. Great, um, we'll talk more in a moment. Uh, and joining us for this, uh, we have a couple of uh, the authors who contributed to this anthology from outside the uh, the sort of Inklings core group. Uh, Jim, Jim Royce, why don't you introduce yourself first of all? And, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's great to be a part of uh, uh, Tales from Alternate Earths 3. Um, and glad my story found a home there because it was a bit of a... Uh, mutant fusion of genres that uh, <laughs> I think needed a home like this, yes. I think that's a pretty fair description. We'll talk more about everyone's stories in just a second. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, Jeff, why don't you introduce yourself and, uh, and tell us a little about uh, where you are in life are. and so forth. I'm Jeff Provine and I'm a professor of English over here in Oklahoma. Um, which we have a special brand of English that encourages y'all and all y'all for the plural. <laughs> uh, typically, uh, a lot of my work's been in nonfiction and collecting ghost stories, um, but I've always had a big passion for what ifs. So alternate history has been a big deal um, and worked with Inklings before, really enjoyed uh, working on some previous alternate histories with uh, hot air balloons and uh, tales from the underground. About yes, some ghostly Spe spirits there. speaking of your collection of, of myths and legends and stuff. Uh, your story, of, uh, was it, oh, God, I've forgotten, from the cave? Something like that, wasn't it? The thing in the cave, The thing yeah. in the cave, yes, that's right. Uh, from Tales from the Underground, yes, that's the first story of yours I think I read. Very, very fun, great. Um, okay, uh, we also will have a little bit later on a video from uh, one of our other contributing authors. She wasn't able to join us uh, for the video chat, but we have got that coming up as well. Uh, but I, I wanted to start briefly with Brent because, uh, as we've talked about before in a video, um, when it comes to alternate history at Inklings Press, uh, the prime mover in this is very much yourself. So I, I know we've talked about this before on, on my uh, YouTube channel, but for those people who've not found that yet, uh, tell us why alternate history particularly appeals to you and why you wanted Inklings Press to get involved with it. Well, uh, I guess when you have a habit, you want your friends and uh, associates to join you in your, your, your habit. Um, but it's alternate earths, uh, alternate histories, absolutely fascinating, fascinating uh, to me. Just imagining what if, and uh, my guess, my enthusiasm spread out a little bit. And but it's really a group effort. I mean, we wouldn't be here today without everybody here uh, putting the best in, in terms of either uh, collaborating, putting a story in, um, editing. I mean, it's really a concerted 100% group effort. 
Yeah. Well, that's so just... true. Jim, is there a particular thing which draws you to alternate history? Well, I think there's uh, there are so many uh, nodal points in in history where you wonder what would have happened if X had occurred sooner or later. And this is, I think, there's probably even a branch of, of historical research now is the why did we come up with the telephone when we did, not earlier, um, and so um, that. Is, it's an ideal place to look for those what if questions that Stephen King says you need to have, uh, you know, to, to stimulate the creative process. So in this case, uh, my story, uh, Not My Monkey, uh, came about for a couple of reasons. Uh, that expression, <laughs> Not My Monkey. Sorry, sorry, Jim. Stephen's showing off his artwork. <laughs> Good. And All that's right. a and that's a it captures the spirit, I must say. <laughs> um, he never wears a mask. great story. Love that. It, being pandemic time, a mask is all right. That's yes. okay. <laughs> so um, you know, the uh, the speculation in this case revolves around a different ending of World War Two. Mm. Um, and in which uh, the Russians nab all the space scientists and we end up with some very morally uh, compromised Japanese scientists. And, and most of that uh, X story, which uh, is, in the, is in the tale, is uh, based in reality. There was a Unit 731 of the Japanese Army that performed horrendous experiments on human people, on human beings, rather, uh, who experimented with plague bombs and who came up with a scheme for a doomsday weapon, basically, to attack the west coast of the United States that wasn't deployed. And that's a what if that's based upon if they'd had a few more months of testing of their uh, submarine-deployed bombers. Does that sound cool or what? <laughs> submarine-deployed short-range bombers, they could have pulled this off. They had the bombs ready, they had the submarines, they were desperate. So anyway, uh, when you when you get you latch on to some little node like that and mm. start digging in, it just uh, it, it's so much fun to to speculate about all the other ramifications. I think what for me was really fascinating about your story is that there is this core of a really sort of dark backstory to it, but actually the story itself is a very light tone. I think it's very. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, humorous imagery, a lot of, a lot of, um, um, there's, a, there's quite a light touch to the prose, I, th I feel. Was that important? And I, I wanted to, you? to write a noir, you know, crime detective story. And uh, those figures, the, you know, the Raymond Chandler's kind of Philip Marlowe, are always set apart from the society they move through. They're always an outsider. They're moving among the rich and the corrupt and the powerful with a, with a different compass. And so my character is so clearly not of the mainstream because he's a chimpanzee with a human brain. That, I mean, it's, it, uh, it's true. It's not, you know... <laughs> isolated. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not super normal. Yes, that's true. Brilliant. I, 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 I think everyone's going to enjoy it. It's, it's such a fun noir... Uh, story with this sort of weird science, slightly creepy sort of backstory to it. I think it's I I, I fell in love with it when I first read it. Uh, so yeah, really good stuff. It was a pleasure working with Inkling Press too. I mean, well, as first you. as I said, finding it a home. Uh, it, it, this story was a finalist in the Writers of the Future competition, but I, I tried a couple places to place it and hadn't had success. One reason being it's kind of long. Mm. Um, but it's not a novella, and of course, is it crime? Is it humor? Is it what is it? So I must, I must say, if you don't mind me saying, I do love the noir feel of it. But oh, um, that two-fisted detective kind of genre, yeah. um, and but I, I just love the way you put it, where you sort of like talk about the um the origins of the story and the history of the story and then you segue into and then it's a chimpanzee with a human brain and that's that's the, that's the bottom line that's a, that's a hook that makes you go hang on wait a minute what 
Right. And as you learn, it's like, well, this was just a ruse anyway. I mean, as the story develops. Well, um, let's, let's, not, let's not give too enough. much away of the story. Yeah. Um, right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks very much, Jim. I, I say everyone look forward to this story because it, it, is, uh, it is a cracking detective story with a chimpanzee with a human brain as as the central character and i think that's uh, two-fisted 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 chimpanzee absolutely essentially four <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's switch I, jeff i will come back to you but but steven since since yeah. since you're here uh, i i want to talk about your story because your story is um i think the most up-to-date of all the stories that we have in in the anthology yeah, I, th I think I'm I'm pushing the limits of history there, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> it seems it seems only yesterday. <laughs> um, so what 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 made you spot? Because we talked we talked and behind the scenes we talked about quite a few ideas that you were you were considering. Um, what was it? What was it that you eventually made you settle on this one? Um, well, there were a couple of other ideas that were kicking around that I felt were kind of like almost like touching too much on things that other people were writing. So I, mm. I, I was like, um, oh, oh, Rob got there first with Wellington. Darn it. <laughs> uh, well, um, and well, things like that. Element of my story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, so there were, there were other things that I was thinking about. But as well, I think with alternate history, there's um, always um, two elements to the story. There's um, the point of divergence where things go different from the world that we are we are living in and then there's the story that you tell against that back so first of all you create the new world and then you tell your story within it um and an awful lot of that tends to center around conflict and war and um ways in which find new and interesting ways to kill each other um so in the end i kind of wanted to write something perhaps a little more hopeful about the things that we could do instead of the horrors that might well visit upon each other um so i i went with uh, my 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 world changes with the um challenger disaster which i don't know about you guys but i certainly remember where i was when uh, when that happened when uh the, when the world came to a standstill and looked at the tv screen and saw the explosion i wondered about the possibility of if if the world takes a more positive turn and so there was an awful lot of talk in the aftermath of the challenger disaster where um nasa was considering were they doing the right thing what were they doing with space exploration and a lot of consideration of really they've just been throwing junk into space lots of satellites lots of spaceships no real mission what what were they actually trying to do um and there were discussions held that really never went very far but one of the discussions was about the possibility of creating uh, a different way of going to space, creating a space elevator, where you string a cable to an asteroid, put it in orbit, um, and find a way of going to space that doesn't involve throwing rockets up every five, every, every few months. Um, and so I thought, well, what if after the Challenger disaster, um, they said, let's go for it, let's do that. Um, and what would happen in the world that set about trying to create an elevator that would be at a fixed location, so you know it would be a target for terrorism and things like that. Yeah. Um, and, and create a story there. And um, but against that, you've got to write a story as well, where you're you're talking about something that's personal to the characters involved. And so that was the the second part of it. And that you'll have to read. Yeah, you see, you won't spoil you won't spoil his story. Happy to spoil mine. No, um, <laughs> it is alternate history is is a is a very interesting genre because you've got to juggle both of those needs. You've got to have the point of divergence, you've got to think about the world building that that brings. But it's still got to be a story about characters you care about, about, about actions and activities that, that interest people. Um, and I think that, again, that, that's a, a very core part of your story. You've got two uh, very relatable characters in it, uh, sort of back and forth between them, set against this really fascinating world building. Uh, springing out of a disaster so i think i i really like that story um let's uh, let's talk to jeff now jeff 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 um i tell you what uh, me and brent uh, it was only when 
Uh, Stephen was sending back the edits on your story. Uh, the, uh, Brent and I realised that we'd completely misinterpreted the title of your story. Um, because your story is actually called Going Over the Top. Uh, but Brent and I, for the entire process uh, of reviewing your story and deciding we wanted it in the anthology and offering it on there, were absolutely convinced it was called Luxavi. Um, which would be a good title too. Which would also be a good title. <laughs> Um, so, but your story does does sort of uh, centre around this particular um, is, well, is, is it a MacGuffin? I don't know, really, because it's kind of the core of what the story is about. Um, without spoiling too much, do you want to share a little bit about about what Luxor is and how it's impacted your alternate history? Right. Well, the whole thing initially uh, came out of uh, Sergeant Daly's line from World War One, uh, hence the going over the top where. Uh, he, he's encouraging all of his Marines to go fight. He says, for Christ's sake, then, come on, do you want to live forever? Right. Uh, right, which, why not? Uh, yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and, you know, always had that kind of filed away. But then uh, going back and reading for that point of departure we were talking about uh, with Nicholas Flamel and, you know, the philosopher's stone and what what you can do with the elixir of life uh which looks to be that kind of shortened term over a couple of hundred years so what if people could live forever how how would things shape up um how would history change not up too much but things get pretty crowded yeah uh, and then kind of blended with another quote patrick henry you know give me liberty or give me death and so he's got all the life he can want but he's been he's 200 years old How's that worked out for him? Yeah, a, a very interesting sort of blend of different historical ideas all coming together in one place. Uh, for, yeah. for again, but, a, but again, a very personal story. Uh, it's really about, I forgot the names of the characters now, but it's really about the two guys in the, in the trenches um, sort of really kind of being in that world, I guess, and dealing yeah, just, with what that means for them. Just a couple of Young guys, Michaels and Thompson, don't even get to their first names. They're just soldiers. And yeah. What's their perspective on this whole thing? And their hopes and dreams and what's right and wrong and how it all fits and just being drafted. Yeah, I, I, I think we've talked, again, uh, we've talked before about how one thing we wanted with uh, Alternate Earths 3 was uh, to steer away from kind of everything's got to be big and writ large uh, and we really we really wanted uh, to find stories for this anthology um, which okay big historical events going on in the background but we wanted the stories to be about people and uh, I think uh, um, certainly uh, going over the top as I will eventually remember that it's called um, uh, I <laughs> Um, certainly, uh, certainly fulfills that criteria. I, I really, really liked it. So, my I mean, one of the things I love about it is, um, you've got that contrast between, you know, you're talking about looks to be the elixir of life and such like, um, but you're setting it in a, a, a place which is synonymous with just death, with, mm. with, which so that you've got a world where where forever is possible, and yet still people throw themselves into into situations where it's just the meat grinder of, of, of war. Um, and that, that contrast, I think, is quite stunning, quite um, makes you sit down and go, you know, oh, the things we could do, and yet the things we still do. Um, I so I, I really loved it. Yeah, and I also, the thing, one of the things that I love about your writing in general, um, or at least the stuff that we've, we've worked with and asked and such like, I think you're really great at taking um, as if it, as if there were two decks, two two halves of a deck of cards, and um, one half of it reality, the other half of it mythology, and then just riffle shuffling the two of them mm -hmm. together. You don't know where one ends and the other begins anymore. And I really love that about your writing. Great. Yeah, that sums up my perspective pretty well. <laughs> um, before we go to Brent, we do have uh, one other author who wasn't able to join us uh, for the chat today, uh, but um, has sent us a short video. So I'm going to choose this moment to introduce uh, uh, Minoti, who uh, not only wrote a rather excellent story in, uh, in Tales from Alternate Earth 3, uh, but also provided us with our foreword as well. So uh, here's Minoti talking about her story. 
Hi, my name is Minodi Veshnav, and I wrote the story To Catch a Ripper. It's a new take on the Jack the Ripper story, one that we really haven't seen before. And that's why this story was so fun to write. But I think what really makes the story unique is its protagonist. Um, our protagonist is a young Indian woman um, living in London in 1888, which is when Jack the Ripper, one of the world's most famous serial killers, was active. Um, so it's sort of a point of view that we haven't read before in short stories, and that's sort of why I wanted to write this, because I wanted to write from my point of view. And when I submitted it to Inklings Press and was accepted into this anthology, I really felt that they got my story and that my story had found its home. Um, during the editing process, I was so impressed by the way the editing was handled. Um, and I'm so excited to be a part of Tales from Alternate Earths Volume 3. It's honestly been an amazing experience. I also had the privilege of writing the foreword for this anthology, and I got to read everybody else's stories. And I have to say that I'm so impressed by the caliber of these stories. I mean, you can tell that Tales from Alternate Earths Volume 3 has been carefully curated and you know the standards are really high so the stories in this anthology are amazing and i can't wait for everybody to check this book out because it's really something that's of great quality and i think the stories in it will bring a lot of joy to a lot of alternate history fans um, so i'm excited for the anthology and i hope everybody enjoys it uh, and so that was Monoti and her story uh, to catch a ripper uh, another thrilling addition to the to the anthology. Uh, always great to have different perspectives on, on stories that people know really well uh, and that's what I liked about, uh, about To Catch a Ripper. Uh, Stephen, I, th I think you talked about, uh, about this one as well. Was there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I must admit, um, when I read this, uh, this story, and let me, uh, let me for a moment just call up the, uh, open the book to the page. Oh, because I, I must admit that you like playing with this with this image as well. Um, so there we have To Catch a Ripper. Um, and I really loved the story. Um, I, I've said it I've said it for all the stories. I really love them all. It's true. Um, but I, what I loved about this one was that it read like a story that could go straight to a screen. It read like something that was... The, the, the pilot episode, um, episode one of a story about this fabulous character that she created. And, um, you know, first off, we're dealing with what, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with Jack the Ripper. But are we dealing with Jack the Ripper? What is Jack the Ripper? Um, what is the life of London? Because that's what, you, what the, the story immerses itself into. It's not just um, showing one person um, being hell-bent for veg vengeance or anything like that. It's about um, the lifestyle that people live there and she shows the, the world in which they operate, not just um, a simple tale of vengeance which should be set anytime, anywhere. It's mm -hmm. very location-specific and character-specific. Mm -hmm. um, and I really loved how she wrote it, really loved what she wrote, and that lead character just deserves a TV series. I, I, I sincerely hope that that is being pitched somewhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, before I go to Brent, uh, I'm, I'm keeping everyone in. Uh, we'll, we'll sort of a big finish here for us. Brent, Brent is our Brent is our capstone. Uh, I just wanted to say we've had um, an exciting bit of news today uh, for one of the other authors uh, in the book. Uh, again, he couldn't be with us uh, for this little voice chat. But as the time of recording, this is the day, actually the day before we launched uh, the book. Uh, but the nominations for the Sidewise Awards for uh, 2019 and 2020 have just come out. Uh, and Matthew Crassel uh, has been nominated for his story Moonshot uh, in Sea Lion Press's Alternate Australias. Uh, and uh, Matthew is, of course, one of the writers in Alternate Earths 3. So we've got to add uh, another uh, Sidewise nominated uh, writer to the list. Hello, I'm congratulations. <laughs> and speaking, and speaking of sideways nominated authors, yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> you don't know what have I, what have I stepped into? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, welcome, welcome to the welcome to the conversation, Daniel. And we were just talking about Matthew, uh, who wrote um, Hitchcock's, Hitchcock's Titanic. Uh, yeah. And Tales from Alternative History just been nominated uh, for a story in another anthology. So uh, that's excellent. Uh, that's pretty exciting. But um, congratulations. We have we have a winner amongst us now. Um, oh, and we're even going to we're going to get a video of our winner. That's even more exciting. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, welcome, Daniel, who um, won the Sidewise uh, Award for um, Alternate Earths One Story Treasure Fleet, wasn't it? Treasure Fleet. Ah, okay. I thought you were talking about something new. Huh? Okay. No, yes, no, I no, won no, it no, no, years no. ago. <laughs> Thank you, you for. You are a winner. For... You are a winner still. <laughs> yes, exactly. Good for me too. Um, hello, Daniel. Welcome, welcome to the conversation. I'm glad you can make it. Um, Thank you. We've we've more or less gone round everybody apart from Brent now, and we're leaving Brent to last as a, as a sort of uh, I don't know, revenge or something. I'm not quite sure what. Um, so, um, Daniel, would you like to tell us a little bit about your story in this book since we've got you? Yeah. Um, yeah. So my story is called Levski's Boots. Uh, and it's it's about a a Bulgarian revolutionary. Um, he's he's sort of the Bulgarian revolutionary. He's the guy who's generally credited with with uh, leading uh, Bulgaria's independence movement uh, from the Ottoman Empire. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he didn't live to see Bulgaria become independent. Um, he was arrested and hanged by the Ottoman authorities. Uh, three years before the Russo-Turkish War that actually liberated the country. Um, and there's a, there's an idiom in Bulgarian, um, Akolevsky Beshes Butushi, which means if Levski had boots. And it refers to this story, I don't know if it's true, but the story is that he tried to escape from the police, but he wasn't wearing any boots, so he couldn't run, so they caught him. Uh, and and the idiom means something like if wishes were horses, you know, when people are are uh, speculating too freely. Uh, and so I gave Levski boots, and uh, he does escape from the authorities, and uh, he goes on to uh, and he and he lives uh, up until the the nineteen teens. Um, but I didn't want to have a Bulgaria wank. I didn't want to say, because this one guy lived, everything was great for Bulgaria after that. In fact, through the first half of the story, history doesn't change. And Levski just sort of beats his head against history. Uh, and it's only after he goes through several more extremely painful personal transformations that he can become the sort of person who can make the change that is possible at the time even though it's not what he wants to do. But I, I don't want to give away anything. No, absolutely so. not. We're, try, we're, we're trying yeah. to avoid... <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> but that's that's the story, yeah. And uh, uh, I really like it. It feels like proper alternate history, I finally. I say, when, when I was talking, again, talking to Brent about this recently, uh, the thing that I love about your story, when we were writing the blurb for the back of the paperback uh, for alternate history, we were trying to find like a few words to sort of encapsulate various different stories in there. And the idea of join us in a world where an inventor had boots was 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 just a yeah. a, a kind of a brilliant kind of what? <laughs> Which I, think, <laughs> I think is a, is a is a really really nice, creative, unusual branch point for an alternate history, and that that really appealed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. It's and it's it's especially funny because that's it's one of like four or five things that I discovered when I was doing research for this story that were very small changes that would have made enormous, uh, enormous, an enormous difference. And I had to, I had to restrain myself and just do the one. Branch of a branch of a branch. Right. Uh, like I found out that uh, this is real. This isn't all in history. Uh, Ataturk, uh, Mustafa Kemal, was before World War One. He was the military attaché of the Ottoman Empire in Sofia, Bulgaria, and he fell in love with the daughter of a Bulgarian general, and tried to get married to her. He asked her. He he you know officially asked her father for her hand in marriage twice. The second time during World War One, 
And this this general said no, and Ataturk was like, okay, I won't marry your daughter. Uh, and you know, if he had, uh, <laughs> who knows? What I love is that the um, the history informs the story, um, and that the changes that that Daniel introduces are what brings on the story and really takes the <laughs> story. So uh, I really love. That. Um, I've been doing it with everybody else, so I'll do the same here. We're sort of like doing the little promo picture of this one. Um, um, so let us cut to the chase. Uh, Brent, dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I was, I'm such a fan of this book. I'm a fan of everyone who's in this book. I mean, I really love all their stories. And for me, it was a challenge to write something that was, it doesn't have to hit your level of everybody else. It just needed to be, like, like felt like it belonged in there. So the only answer I had was to kind of look at something that was personal for me uh, and write about that. And that is, um, you know, my own alternate history. Uh, and uh, uh, for me, that could have been, I could have been a paleontologist, but very likely, I'm very much set. Um, and uh, Joss Park also had a very profound impact on that 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 uh, almost decision. But uh, what I wrote about is what if Jurassic Park had never been written? And um, really, it's not actually about necessarily that. It's about stories. My story is about stories, and um, how important stories are to civilization, to ourselves. Uh, and really, uh, people are stories in progress. So it kind of deals with uh, a, a character who's having to go on and do her own issues in a world where dinosaurs are not as well known or popularized as they are in our world. And how that affects her, how she sees the world, and how she sees herself, and how she battles with different uh, issues including some mental health issues that she has to struggle with um, in a way to kind of come to a conclusion about stories and how important they are and how important they are to tell. Um, and that is my contribution to the, the book. And I'm really excited about it. And I hope others will find it uh, enjoyable as well and worthwhile. Thank you, Brent. I, I, I think uh, we have we have talked a lot longer than I intended to, <laughs> as it goes. Uh, so I think it's probably time we start thinking about wrapping things up. Uh, but before we go, is there anything that people wanted to add that we've not had a chance to talk about, not had a chance to cover uh, during the conversation so far? Just uh, appreciation for being a part of it. No, you're thank welcome. you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Great that the project. I hope there's an AE4. <laughs> We haven't, we haven't started talking about what's next, uh, but uh, as, I wrote in the, as I wrote in the afterword, in this uh, reality or another, uh, there probably will be an alternate four. Um, <laughs> Infinitely breakating. <laughs> All right. Well, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm very glad to have had everybody with us. It's, uh, it's been a lovely experience yes. um, with, it, with all, the, all the stories that take us to just such interesting places, you know, um, and... Um, like I was saying earlier about uh, Minotti's story and how the lead character there, I'd love to see recur again. I'd love to see a particular monkey come back again. <laughs> He's on I like the way. It's, it's still in handwritten <laughs> draft, though. So, unreadable at this point. <laughs> Um, well, um, I, I'm going to wrap up then at this point. I thank you for okay. everybody who was able to join us today. I know we were a bit late notice on this, uh, but it was great to have a chance uh, to have a chat with everyone about their stories. Uh, I hope everyone out there is excited about getting this book, uh, as I am, as we are, uh, getting it out to people because it is. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the thing we pulled together between between us and the other. Uh, uh, other authors, I can't count. I've got a maths yeah. degree. Whole bunch. There exists, there exists, <laughs> there is a consistent alpha such that as alpha tends to, that's how many authors we've got. Uh, then we take six away and we get, uh, never mind. Um, 
I was saying something. Uh, Out yes. in the marketing group, right now. Yes, yeah. book, book. That is that's the proof copy. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so and the paperback and ebook. Um, and um, indeed, for those who want to get a sneak peek, I believe Rob uh, might even have a link handy for um, reading his story. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. I suppose I should just mention that I did a reading of my story, uh, Ops and Ostentation, on my um, podcast. Uh, so if you want to hear me doing my uh, best Jane Austen pastiche uh, <laughs> with a number of comedy voices, uh, feel free to check that out as well. Uh, but in the meantime, that, I think that's enough from us today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us both here in the panel and out there in the Internet. Uh, and for now, this is Inklings Press signing off. Cheers. <laughs>